What's up guys, Tim Halsett here for another episode of Drag Boss Garage. Today's episode is titled The Rarest Ford Head Ever Made. And I guess I should have changed that and said the rarest Ford head ever created. Because this head wasn't made, it was created. And it took a lot of effort and time and welding rod to make this secret A3 head. So I want to show you how it evolved and give you a little bit of update on everything. But I don't want to put too much stuff in this video take away from the heads. I'm going to make a separate video for all the shout outs and all the things that have been happening because we got a lot of changes going on. i got to give the shout out to my daughter though because it's her sixth birthday today. So happy birthday, Elena. Hope you have a great day. Here's where we're at. To kind of give you a little bit of history on this A3 head that I have that's now called the secret A3 head, it started off as an idea. After I had talked to Darren Morgan about getting the track boss and it being an all aluminum block, and we talked about what cylinder heads we're going to put on it. And we talked about the various types. Scott Cooks, Darren Morgan has worked with him before. You got the new Higgins head. You got AFD. You got the Brodix. You know, CHI stuff. So there's a lot of aftermarket heads out there. And those aftermarket heads are probably better than this. But you know what? When you look at the expense to get those tuned up, so to speak, and the parts availability, I said, what do you think you could do with these A3 heads? He said, you know what? I'll set them on kill. And after we started talking about that, he started giving me some information on what he thinks he could do. So I sent them to him. And as you will see, the transformation is unbelievable. He actually made them into a more modern type combustion chamber. Like here, here's a picture of the Blue Thunder. They almost look like a Blue Thunder head combustion chamber. Now we had talked about previously on my Bob Glidden video why he was so fast and I think this is one of the reasons because if you look at that video you can see the combustion chamber being formed in cast iron where he heated it up and welded it in the oven. Now I talked to Rusty Glidden, him and I are buddies, we text back and forth and he told me that that was the truth and that I think is one of the reasons he was a little faster than others. Darren Morgan told me that that combustion chamber, that cartoid shape, adds about 25 foot-pounds of torque. It's going to make a big difference, I think. Now, here's let me, let me preface this video with this. First of all, this is preliminary. I don't have any head flows. I don't have any port volume. I don't have any CC of the combustion chamber because it's all preliminary. I still have to get the titanium intake and exhaust valves. They're going to be going to BES. I'm sending these heads to get cleaned at Scott Miller, Aluminu process because I want them to look nice if they're going to go on the track boss. So once I get those back, they're going back to Morgan, and he's going to finish them up. Then we'll have all the data, and we can see what they're going to do. When they're matched with 427 cubic inches of all aluminum track boss Cleveland. So it's in the makes. Everyone's interested in all the pictures I put up of the crank and the rods that I had done at Shaft Tech with the Omnicron process. I'm going to give you, like I said, the other video with lots of updates and shout outs because people have been really helping me and I don't want to forget about them, but I just want to keep this video kind of succinct. So that next video, I'm going to have all the shout outs and mention everybody, the credit that's been due and who's been helping me. So I'm going to go ahead, stop talking here, <laughs> and let's get to these transformation of the Secret A3 head. Here's how the Secret A3s were created. Here's a picture of the combustion chambers and the head. You can see they're all welded in, then the seats are removed. You don't want to weld on an aluminum head with the seats in or they will loosen up after. Here's the custom guides. These things are massive, Darren said. That way he can allow for custom profiling. If you look here, you can see the initial intake port with porting and the profiled valve guide. Here's the heads after they've all been welded and the seats have been removed. Now what he's going to do is replace the seats and then start forming the combustion chamber into the secret A3. You can see here all the welding that was done and that's only one chamber. Imagine doing that to eight of them. Massive amount of welding and time. Almost looks like lizard scales. Here's the head all set up and scribed and getting ready to set up the straight area where the spark plug is with a straight edge. You want that parallel with the valves like this. Here's another view of roughing in the ports and combustion chamber. 
Here's the center combustion chamber semi-finished. The right side is beginning and the left side is raw, untouched. Here's the beginning of the combustion chamber. You, the valves are in there to protect it as he forms it and shapes it. Check this out. The secret A3 combustion chamber. Thanks, Darren Morgan. This adds 25 foot-pounds of torque. Now, this is looking down the finished port. Look at that. I can see the air-fuel mixture flying through there, ready to explode. Turn that tack up. Here's the initial exhaust port. You can see the guides profiled, and here it is finished. Definitely can see right through there. Look at the combustion chamber. This is the secret A3 head. This is a standard Cleveland combustion chamber. Polyangle, you know that you all recognize that. Well, this looked the same. As you see in the pictures that I showed you previously to this, he's welded all this up. So it's kind of a raised area here. And the same thing here. This is like your modern cartoid type combustion chamber. Like the Yates, the Blue Thunder, the C3 stuff that has that shape. Totally changed compared to this. We'll see if we can get both together. That's pretty darn close. So here's what sets off these A3 heads, the secret A3 heads from my regular A3 that Darren ported. Now here you're looking through the intake port. Look at that. That's a drop right there. This one is too. So you can see the air going through there, air fuel mixture. Now, in this case, he moved the push rod pinch back by putting this brass sleeve. That straightens the port out. Then he added epoxy here to the top. Here, he's gone up higher in the roof. You can see that by looking at the valve guide, the way it's ported upwards. But I think he alleviates some of the push rod pinch just by how he's got it shaped. Now here's a comparison of the exhaust ports. The secret A3 is on the right. My current A3, they're going to be tested on the 409, is on the left. I'll give you a little bit better port view. They both have pretty good ports as far as entry. Current A3, done by Morgan. You can see that got right into the where that stud goes. Bring that port over and straighten it out. And then the secret A3. Now here's the intake we're going to use with the secret A3s. I got this intake from Jimmy Huff. Thanks, Jimmy. I got this with a set of C302B heads, which are back there in that pile. So Darren Morgan's going to work on this. Possibly make it similar to this here with his anti-reversion plate here. You can see the Scott Cook back there. We're going to be testing that soon. Nothing really done to this. I do like these intakes though. We'll make this bad. There it is. It says Halstead's Killer 351 heads. We're going to leave that on there. But it's cool to kind of see the development of this cylinder head. Now see what it looks like, a finished product. It's pretty much finished. He's got to do a little more work on it and finish the other one, which I sent to get the custom headers made. Once those are done, then they'll be going back to Darren Morgan at BES. But if you look close, you can look right through those exhaust ports almost simultaneously. Can't wait to see what these can do. And they end up on the Track Boss 427. We're going to see some fire breathing Cleveland, I'll tell you. Stay tuned.